1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58. Can we have it on the screen quite quickly? 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58. Oh. Thank God we have our own Bible. Tell your neighbor, are you there? Yes. <laughs> the devil is a liar. You know when you don't be prepared to open your heart and you're not opening it? <laughs> he will just get you. Okay. No, we can't read Amplified. Give us New King James Version. It's too long to read Amplified. It will be like 40 minutes. <laughs> New King James Version, please. They are there. All right. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit in corruption. Verse 51 says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. 55. O oh, death, where is your sting? Question mark. O oh, eight, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. Verse 57. But thanks be to God. Look at your neighbor and say, but thanks be to God. Who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren. Can we take it together? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that the, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. In the Lord. Tonight, for a few minutes, I'll be teaching on winning when it matters. Shall we pray? Father, thank you because the entrance of the word gives light and understanding unto the simple. As simple folks, we come tonight to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer, and I want to write the word of life upon the spirit of man. I declare, O oh God, that after now the reason for sending your word shall be fulfilled. We all shall be better people and walk according to your counsel. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Be seated. Look at your neighbor and help me share the title with your neighbor. Winning when it matters. All right. So, this is a very unusual message. <laughs> and it is not what you may expect from a Jesse Sunday. And not what you will expect from me. But about a few weeks ago, I was seated under administration. And God began to share some things. The man, I don't know whether you have been there. Preachers would have been there. They were preaching, saying some things. And I was hearing something else. And God was sharing something else with me. And he was giving me this perspective he wanted me to share with you. So today I'm glad you are here. I want to give you God's voice, God's perspective. If it is left to me, I won't preach this message. Uh, it's not what my sense want to preach. But we are spirit people, so we should be led by God. I believe there is this message for one person here. For two persons here, or for all of us, depending. Winning when, to, when it matters. To be sure, we live in a quiet, senseless world. A quiet, senseless world. Sometimes all that matters to the world is what kind of car you are driving. What matters to them is how much you have in your account. What matters to them is what kind of house you are living in. Most people are not bothered. They don't care how you get the money. All they care about is, you have it, you are in the life. You are living the life. We define success as the amount of money in the bank. The numbers of houses built. The numbers of vehicles in the garage. The numbers of slave queens at your beck and call. The number of people that work for you. And in this social media dominated sphere and social media dominated world, we define it as how much followers you have, how much comments you garner, 
How much likes? 1K.2, 1.2, 3.5K? Likes you get? And how much people regret your post on Instagram? It's a quite crazy one. And many times, many of us are depressed and sad because we are trying to compare ourselves with the Jones and the Joneses next door. Oh, we're trying to keep up with Jones, Joneses and the Kardashians all together. We're trying so hard to live a life God did not call us to live. We are competing with the world using the standard of the world. Allow me to say to you that you can never beat the world in his own game. The reason many of us are sad, unfulfilled, mad, crazy, even living in sin, is that we are using the wrong measuring road. What I'm sharing with you is not for today, it's for your eternity, for life. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. The word of the Lord says, they that compare themselves and measure themselves by themselves are not wise. I don't like that translation too much because you may get home before you understand the meaning. I like the one that I read that says, they that measure themselves by themselves are foolish. They are fools. That kind of just, just gets it, you get? Not wise. You think not wise, not wise. You say, ah, what you did is not wise. You say, okay, it's, good. It's, not, it's not an abuse. <laughs> but when you say what you did, is, it's foolish. You kind of just get it. It was Theodore Roosevelt that said, comparison is a thief of joy. To be sure, to be certain, we may never get to be what the world has. You may never be the most famous guy in your class. To be sure, you may never be loved by people in your place of work. To be sure, you may never be the most sexiest guy around. You may never be the richest. Therefore, you may not call you king of girls, king of boys, or king of the world. To be sure, you are not called to compete in that race. So we may never always win on earth. Jesus said in John 16, 33, he said, in this world, you will find trouble. He said, be of good cheer. He said, I have overcome the world. He said, I have overcome the world. So that people will not like us as believers. <laughs> it's okay. Listen to this. Sometimes we fool ourselves that it's only the devil that does not like us. It's not only the devil. People will not like you also. Because if you don't look like them, in a class where they all want to cheat in the exam, and you are standing out, they won't like you. In a place where <laughs> Reverend George told us one time that he went to a meeting at Azo Rock, and some men of God came off with a lot of bags. And he said, ah, where is my own bag now? They said, ah, we know you will not take it. That's why we did not bring your own. We didn't give you. We didn't bother. He said, we should have tried me. He said, no, no, we know you. You will not take it. When they did the meeting next time, they didn't call him. You know why? He's a spoiler. Because they know he will say it on the pulpit. He will say it everywhere. He's a spoiler. They won't like you if you stand out for righteousness. It's high time we understand that we are salt. Salt is salt, light is light. It's high time we understand that we are called to live differently. Listen, I understand that living with the world may be quiet testing. It might be quite tempting. I don't know about you. But there's this iPhone that they use now. It's called iPhone 11 Pro. Anytime I see those three cameras as they are lined up, I don't know about you, but I'm being real here. Something tells me I need that in my life. I don't know about you. I don't know whether there's any one of you who ever wish for a journey. Apologies to those who are using techno and all of those phones. But you see, when you see somebody, you labor to buy a techno phone. And then you are feeling fly. And somebody just brought out an iPhone Pro 11. My God. Your joy is sapped. It's natural. One guy was telling me, he said, my phone takes good camera, takes good picture. Takes good. I looked at the picture. Somebody just bought someone. Took one. I said, how far? <laughs> and it felt very bad. I don't know about you, but when I was in school, I knew ladies who did not read but were passing. And we knew what they were doing with the lecturers, but they were passing. You can tell me, oh God, you speak in tongues. But there are seasons in your life that you feel like it. When you see it, you are, you are still believing God. Especially if you're a learning student or you graduate from me learning, you know what I'm speaking about? <laughs> and then you go to school. When we were in school, it was always like that. I remember one time I was talking to a lady. I was trying to walk together to the park. And then a call came in. Where are you? 
Say, I am. I thought you say we are. Say, I am. She said where she was. And five minutes we were laboring to get to the park. A guy came with the car. She said, I'll see you later. And she entered. And she left. Now, as she left, my spirit was angry. I knew this was not the life. I don't know about you, but I've seen Yahoo boys with fantastic cars. See, don't let us deceive ourselves. Those cars are good. Hello? As alloy, alloy. You bother to buy a car. Somebody told me, say, change my wheel to alloy. I said, you are all not okay. Alloy for what? The thing's supposed to be on the road. Let him be pressing the road like that. What's my business? They will pimp the car to a fantastic alloy. The price of those alloy can buy you a car. Am I speaking to somebody here? And then you see the houses. Some of them say they have businesses in town. We know them, you know them. But you know that how much can they be earning from that thing to sustain that lifestyle? Sometimes you feel like having that kind of money in your account. My wife, myself and my wife went recently to somewhere in the mall. And I see, I saw, you know when they told us the price of those things? <laughs> she looked at me and said, you will buy it, you buy it. <laughs> and then I bought it. And as we sat down waiting for it to be ready, some guys came in. And they, the way they were buying, I said to my, I said, see, 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 people have money. <laughs> I don't know where they are getting from, but they have money. They were buying what I was thinking. Some of those things, before we even went there, I've been planning for almost two weeks. And the guy came in and was spending it, card or cash, cash. And they would bring out the bundle. You'll be thinking to yourself, have you not working? God, my father, am I not working? Is it not the same work we are doing? I don't know whether these people came to church today. <laughs> Let's read Psalm 73. Sometimes you may want to give up. Psalm 73, 2 to 3. Psalm 73, 2 to 3. You know, when you go through things like this, remember that even David almost fell. Look at the Bible. The Bible says, But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. Verse 3. For I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Even David, the man after God's heart, he said, as for me, he, you know, this is not playing church. That's why I told you my own story. As for me. He said, as for me. He said, my feet almost slipped. When I saw the, he didn't, call, he didn't say it's not prosperity. Stop deceiving yourself. Those guys have money. But we are not called to run that race. Hebrews 11 verse 13. The Bible says concerning the people the elders of our faith. These all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Listen, the reason why it is worth it is not because we fall under the anointing. The reason why it is worth it is not because when I pray for you, you get healed. <laughs> the reason it is worth it is not because I am enjoying Jesus. No. The reason it is worth it is that I am a stranger here. There is a place called heaven. Hebrews 13, 14. He said, for here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Jesus understood that the world and his systems can get to us. We can become so disoriented. When we see the successes of the wicked and we can begin to ask, why are we here? Why is my case different? John 14, 1 to 4. Very fantastic. Jesus made it clear. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way, you know. Listen, let them build all their houses. There is a mansion for me. Let them build. See, I don't know the architect that did the job. Apologies to the architect on this earth. But Jesus said, I go to prepare a place. The chief architect of this kingdom is the God himself. I don't know how my house will look like, but I know there is no house like it on earth. There is yet a home. There is yet another world. Listen, the time we spend here is so small. 
so insignificant uh, that you and I must live a better life. You are not living for now, you are living for a better room. Listen to this, I don't care how old you get before you die. But even if you live 110, 150, it is still insignificant when compared to eternity. When they say he died young, <laughs> it's not, it's not he, he died old. Forget it. Eternity is so is eternity. You can't even think it in your head. It's years without end. So why would I spoil my years without end for 90 years or bling bling? Listen to this. Philippians 3.20 says, But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there. The Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let the world tell you there is no heaven to come. I know it's not your favorite message. We don't preach it. We don't preach heaven. <laughs> but listen, there is an heaven. Hello? I know young people don't think of dying. That's why I didn't call it prepare to meet thy God. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> but you see, there is yet a home. We are citizens not of the earth, but we are citizens of heaven. It's not an ordinary kingdom. It's a kingdom that when he invades the earth, commotion happens in the heart. When God comes home, revival breaks down. When God, when we now sit with him in heavens, how much joy will we experience? Listen, I don't know what you know. I don't think what you think. But the way I think it, like David of old said, is that there is so much grace. There is so much joy. There is so much happiness. There is so much fun in heaven. I don't want to miss out on it. Someone told me, he said, but we will not eat in heaven. I said, who told you? Who told you? Jesus resurrected. Jesus told the disciples, he said, what do you have? Let us eat. It was his resurrected body that he ate. I don't know about you, but I'm going to enjoy heaven. Heaven is not the own way we do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. No, it's a place we will be kingdom forever. Time without end. How we not allow the world to make me miss out on heaven? Somebody is thinking, want to do a tackle. No, I'm, I'm trying to tell the people who are bound for heaven that they don't need to compare themselves with the world. Somebody said, I don't even have money to buy a good jersey. Baba, just buy anything. Our forefathers, now leave God, you save them. Are you with me? It was leave. The first designer was leave. God had to save him. Save man from himself. Keep a, a goat for sacrifice and covered man with it. Don't let the world tell you you should be happy because you have money in your account. Some of us have had the money. We have had the cars. It does not do anything. I tell you, you will leave you, will leave you empty without God. God is the one that fulfills. Get your first car, you want the second car. Get the second car, you want another brand. It's called the greed of greed. It never ends. That's why iPhone is doing another one right now. The moment they release another one, some people are already manufacturing another one. Because they know that your need is insatiable. Listen to the way Paul puts it, 1 Corinthians 15, 19. He said, if in this life we have hope in Christ, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, he said we have of all men the most miserable. I don't know about you. Listen, if there is no heaven, we will all be following girls. Are you people listening to me? Are we being real here? We, we all, do you think I don't see fine girl? I don't know that this is a fine girl. No, no, some of you think that we are more born again than ourselves. You see flesh, no, they're here. What are you talking about? When I saw the latest Lexus, I saw that this is a car. There are cars that, that defy sport hole. I'm telling you. Ah, oh, I entered the Tundra of Baba 2015 edition. I entered it. I said, Daddy, this road, there's hold of. I said, No, we'll take Daddy James' side. You know that road? We did not, it thought you, it was like express road. The tires itself, do you think I didn't want to collect it? I said, let me carry this one home. One boy came to me and said, come and bless my car. Look at the car, look at the work he's doing. I know this is a Yahoo boy. I felt like cursing the idiot out of his, the man. <laughs> oh, you don't, you don't think that there's, there's a reason they look after Benz. Benz is car. Therefore, if our only hope is on this earth, you and I should tell ourselves we are losers. Do you understand that? We are losers. We are not getting anything. 
Baba, with all the business, how much you get for account? You see, listen, let's face the truth. We may never be the richest. Because you won't cut corners. Because you, you are not allowed to put figures behind it. You are not allowed to do that. Two figures can make you a billionaire. Ah, it's a one million dollar contract. Ah, two, 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 just add two zeros. But you know what? We are not allowed to do that. I'm not allowed to do certain things. Why? Everyone constrains me. There is a home. It's, you don't make decisions for now. You make decisions for later. I tell people, chase after success. Try and fulfill your purpose. Build houses if you can. Buy cars if you can. Do your best. But peace and joy is in understanding that this world and everything in it is passing away. But there is a joy for the believer. There is a home for us. First John 1 John 1.17 John said, and the world is passing away and the lost of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Ha! When they die, they will be shouting. Remember Abraham? <laughs> but Jesus told us the parable of Abraham. He was crying in the pit of a fire. He said, please let them just give me water. A drop of water. You know what Abraham said to him? Father Abraham looked at that rich man. He said, oh, oh Benny, calm down. When you are in the world, you did your own enjoyment. He is now where he will do his own enjoyment. Uh, listen to this. He was saying he won when it matters. Uh, there is a time it matters to win. Uh, because that guy is going to enjoy forever. This guy only lived for 30, 40 years. And that was the end. Uh, there is a time to win. Uh, time to win is to win in heaven. Leave them. Let them enjoy. 70 years. I, if, see, if God like, let me give them 100 years. Somebody said, but you know those people, they don't die young. Let them die when they will die. One thing is certain, they will die. And then we will now start part two. Tell your neighbor there is a part two. That part two. Tell him, that part two is a sister's film that never ends. Oh. <laughs> we may look like losers in the high of the world and in the measuring scale, but don't worry, we will win and laugh when it matters most. Let the world and our fans celebrate their momentary victory. Let them celebrate their Exposure on Instagram and the followership they have because they can afford to remove their cleavages, remove all their clothes, and slit all they can slit. Allow them to enjoy their momentary fame. There is a time where we sit at the right hand of the majesty. When they see the father, they see us. That is being famous. You don't get it. When you see the father, you see me. That's being famous. There is a war to come. There is a war to come. The time it matters most is not on this earth, it's in heaven. Heaven is where the story ends. Yes, I may gain some victory here. And I may live as a winner. I may be clothed radiantly. And I may have a nice ride. But you haven't seen me in glory yet. I may have a good car. You have not seen me in glory yet. I might take vitamins and use nice makeup and it makes me come out well. But you have not seen my glory yet. Wait till I get to heaven. Dear friends, now we are children of God. And it has not yet appeared what we shall be. But we know when Christ appears, we shall be like him. That is real glory. Some say, ah, man of God, you are shining. Wait, calm down. When I be like him, that's when you will see glory. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 2 to 3, All who have this hope in him purifies themselves just as he is pure. Revelation 3, 21. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right. To sit with me on my throne. Just as I was victorious and I sat down with my father on his throne. There is a sitting on the throne. Anyone who wins, sit on a throne. Is that not true? Start on a podium. There is a winning for us. We are sitting on a podium. We are sitting on a throne. If you don't have money to eat spaghetti by Gary, this world is not my home. I am just passing through. Listen, it is time we speak some truth to ourselves. You will not be depressed <laughs> when you have an understanding that it is just 70 years. 70 years is small. Allow me to say to you, and by now, I think I spent 34 out of it. And I can remember when I was in Loyola College, running around those streets of Odiva Road, being a trounce in school. I can remember it like yesterday. Oh, John Law, man of God, I don't care how much you want to give me, I will not sell my salvation for you. Why? Because I know it's momentary. It's just for a little while. We know where it matters most, we will win. There is an end for the righteous. There is a crown for the righteous. There is a hope for 
the righteous. This is the heavenly perspective. It was this same perspective that made Jesus look at the disciples in Luke 10, 20. He said, however, do not rejoice. You know, those guys came like some of these guys come, you know, when they just move in the spirit, lay hands on somebody. Yeah! <laughs> Anointing today, the father. <laughs> you know, they just get high. So the disciples came to Jesus. You know, these things have always happened. The disciples came to Jesus. Yeah, oh, the spirits are subjected to us. Oh my God. We just say your name like this. They just fell down, slain in the spirits. They were happy. They were jubilating. Jesus told them that's not a source of joy. Luke 10, 20. He said, however, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Listen, it is not power that makes us rejoice. It is that my name is written in heaven. There is a number there, and my name is there. If you flip the file, it is there. Nothing, nothing matters anymore. I know that my name is where it matters. Someone say, eh, my convocation list is my name there, and clinical list is my name there. You want to die. You are depressed. I want to ask you, are you on the list of convocation in heaven? Matriculation in heaven? I don't even think we are convoking for life. <laughs> is your name there? That's all that matters. If you understand these things, you will live life joyful and happy. Winning when it matters most. We can find the concept even in the game of football. Remember sometimes in 2002, Nigeria went to the World Cup called Korea, Japan. <laughs> All the friendly match we played, I don't think there was the coach there. We won everything. Won everything, the friendly. Won everything. When we got to the main World Cup, they beat. We did not win anything. Argentina, they beat us. England, they beat us. <laughs> You know, we were winning when it does not matter. When you win in a friendly game, it does not matter. When you, some people preseason, Arsenal beat everybody. That's Arsenal for you. They will beat every, they win every cup in friendly. But when it comes to the league and the FA Cup itself, apologies to you people. <laughs> when it comes to the thing itself, they beat them out. You know why? They are winning when it does not matter. I would rather lose in all the friendly matches and win in the Champions League. I would rather lose all the friendly matches and win in the World Cup. Allow me to say to you that the World Cup is heaven. This art is just friendly. Let the world win when they want to win. Where it matters when we will win is in the World Cup. I am ready. At that time, I sit at the right hand of God, say, enter. And, and I see that young boy coming here, I say, you, there. I say, oh, she. It is my time to laugh. You know why? I won when it matters. Tell your neighbor you have to win when it matters. Let them have the cars. Oh, the one you don't like me saying, let them have the girls. Oh, they said now they are even doing it. Let them have the boys. There is a place it matters. We may not be happy here, but we enter into the fullness of joy in the heavens. He will laugh last. Laugh best. First Peter 1, 3 to 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fade not away, reserved in heaven for me. <laughs> hey, for you. He didn't say for the church. Everyone has their own individually. You die before me does not mean you will take my own. Reserved in heaven for you. There is a reservation. You know when you get to an hotel, you want to book an hotel? He said, please, did they reserve something here for Mr. Adeni? So let us check, let us check. Let us check. Yes, yes, yes. When we get to heaven, you know, some of us just say, what's your name, Mr. Adeni? Ah, reservation, block two, F, G, the whole lane. Ah. Are you angry? You think I will take one bank alone? It's not enough? The old lane! I say, yes, sir. And the moment they say it, immediately you will get there. It's not, there's no, you know this one, I'll be complaining with God. Forget it. Over to the by, pam, the man. There's no time. I, say, oh, I just see myself. <laughs> and you see the deed of Ukopas, you see my name everywhere. When I take the cup, they would have signed it. I'm telling you, he's so rich, he has a city laid of gold. You think I'll be drinking with glass, with glass cup? With all this things I've done? With all these demons I've chased around, thank you. Ah, 
stop it, stop it. Stop it. Ah. Stop it. Just ministry is work. Oh. My voice is gone. I've not slept well for a while now. With all of this, you are not taking they will give me a room. He said, a lane like a city. He said, here we have no continuing city. We look for another. See the way Abraham was thinking. He didn't say, here we have no continuing village. There is a city in the heavens. When you wake up every day, look at your home above. I don't care how much money you may eventually get on earth. It is insignificant when you compare it to the wealth reserved for you in the heavens. So what should you do very quickly? Because we have this living hope. What should we do? Let's keep serving God. Keep serving. Listen, don't play it safe. It will be worth it at the end. You remember the story of the wicked servant who kept the talent God gave him? I like reading the story of that guy. You find it in Matthew 25. But I want us to read Matthew 25, 28 to 30 in the message translation. Matthew 25, 28 to 30 in the message translation. Background to these talents were given to folks uh, and one guy just eat his own and all of that. And he said, listen, the guy now said, I kept my own. The master looked at him. He said, take the thousand and give it to the one who risked the most. Who risked the most. You need to take risk for this kingdom. Because you see, there is a reward. <laughs> there is a reward on the heart. When you see some people, they keep growing in their level of anointing, even on the heart. It's because they risk more for God. And God can trust them with more. He said, let's, let's give it. Only, and get rid of this place safe. Who won't go out on a limb? It's just, let's just be safe here. We don't touch them. Or them or don't touch us. So it's okay like this. So, and we don't pray too much. We don't pray too much. So that people will not hate us. So we don't do evangelism. He said, get rid of this one. Verse 29. He said, for to everyone who asks, more will be given and he will have abundance. But for him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And then verse 30. He said, and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping. They have gone back to KGV. Let's continue. Take risk for the kingdom. Go all out for God. There is a reward. We are not only waiting for a reward here alone, but even in the world to come. Keep serving. Someone say, why should I serve? Number one, because God is your rewarder. He's not just your rewarder. The Bible called him our reward. Genesis 15, 1. He said, I am your exceeding great reward. It's not that God will give you something. God will come into your life and say, yes, this is your reward, me. Do you get that? Do you get that? It's not like God will give you gifts. God is saying to you, I, myself, I am your reward. So God is your reward. And number one, that's why you should serve. Number two, serving God is a good investment. Mark 10, 29 to 30. When I saw this in scriptures, when I wanted to enter the ministry, that's what made me enter. I just believed it. Mark 10, 29 to 30. Serving God is a good investment. Mark 10, 29, 30. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left the house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. Verse 30. Who shall not receive a hundredfold? When? Talk to me. Now, in this time. Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children and lands with persecution. And in the age to come, what is that? Eternal life. So there is a reward. It's a good investment. You don't only get it here, you get it in heaven. Even when you die, there's still a reward. You, are keep, you keep reaping the reward. It's a good investment. You get hundredfold. When Jesus left his family, when he died, the people who were at the cross were more than his family members. Do you get that? Those are his new family. They were more. Who did he leave? James, Mary, and probably two guys. See how many people were at the cross. When he was living, see how many people gathered and looked at him. 120 people. And he said, this same Jesus who you see without less return. That's a reward. That's a reward. It's a good investment. Houses and domains, here and in heaven. When you serve God, God gives you something. Let me tell you a secret God gives you. It may not give you money, but it gives you men. And listen, 
men is access to riches and wealth. They looked up by the way, he said, how rich are you? <laughs> he said, I'm, I'm very rich. I, I remember he, he said, I can get one billion if I want it now. I don't have it in the account, but I can get it now. Do you know what he will do? Just say it. When he said he needed a car, he had to stop them for, to stop bringing cars. <laughs> that is money. God will give you gift of men. In the next 50 years, in the next 5, 10 years now, some of you will be big boys and big girls. And then I'll be able to say, Augusta, Augusta, I want to travel for vacation. Send money. See, that's no problem. You know why? That's men. He's not calling you. Listen to this. God will always give you answer to your problem. He may not give you money. He will solve your financial needs. He may not give you money. You must trust him that whatever it takes, God will make a way. Number three, why you should serve him? Because there are crowns in heaven. We must begin with Revelation chapter 3 and verse 11. He said, Behold, I come quickly. I hold. He said, Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man may take thy crown. So when some people say, you see, some of you will not have crown on your head. It's not, it's not true. At least there will be one crown. There is a crown. You have crown. I don't know how many you have. And I don't know how many you plan to have. But if you are greedy, be greedy for the things of heaven. Begin to work hard now. So that you can have plenty of crowns. I'll give you two crowns you can have. The Bible told us that there is something called the crown of glory. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 4. That does not fade away. A crown of glory. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. The Bible talks about a crown of life. In James, James also spoke of a crown of life. There is a crown for the believer. There is a crown. That's why it's good to serve him. Number four, why should you serve him? Because the, of the joy of the Lord. Listen to this. We enter into the fullness of God's joy in heaven, but he has given us a tangibility of his joy on earth that the world can never have. The world can be happy because they take more weight. They might be happy because they, take, they took NNC. Hallelujah. They can do crazy things because they are high on Kodain. <laughs> but there is something, a tangibility of the spirit that is upon us. Uh, because that gift is in us. Uh, we have the joy of the Lord. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh, I may not have money at home. I may not have food in my pocket. And food at home. Uh, my storehouse may be empty. But there is a joy. I just keep laughing. I just keep smiling. Uh, I don't know what makes me happy. But I'm happy. I'm not happy because of what is happening externally. I am happy because of what is internal when you look at this word you will fail See, I, I've not married I've, I've not married I've not married I've not married the meeting by me I've not married hello marry the marry you marry after 50 or 60 years both of you will die that's the truth so why do you want to lose heaven because of marriage Matthew 25 and verse 23. The Bible says he told the servant to enter into the joy of the Lord. Let's listen to the advice of Paul, therefore. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, amplified fashion. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, amplified fashion. The Bible says, therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, always doing your best and doing more than is needed. Be continually aware that your labor even to the point of exhaustion in the Lord is not futile, nor wasted. It is never without purpose. Do you see that? Don't worry, there might be difference in amplified because there's a classic amplified and there's another amplified. So don't, don't disturb yourself. So, what is the Bible saying? It said just do your best. Sometimes we serve to the point of exhaustion. I don't know whether you have been there before. Ah, legs are shaking. You cannot even do anything. Sometimes it's not church alone you do it. You even do it at the place of work. And after that time, your boss look you in the face and say you are useless. Don't worry. Be happy. It's a time. It's a, it's a question of time. I don't care how long it will take. A day will come I will enter into my place in heaven. 
Oh, you think it's only your place of work that you have evil? In ministry, people backstab. They kill you. They want to kill you. In my little time in ministry, I have seen a lot. We have cried tears. Men cannot see us cry. We have been disturbed. We have been mentally challenged. Men have lied, gossiped about us. Uh -huh. We have got it to a point now that when they say it's ill, uh, even those who cry, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Give them gone. They will shoot you in the head. I'm telling you. One girl came to our house a long time ago. Say, oh, I just love you. I just love you. Looked at me and my wife and said, when, when your daughter grows up, I will sew all her clothes. I will pay school fees for her. Three months later, if she saw gone, she will kill me. Now she does not greet us again. Ah. <laughs> so you know when you come and you are saying all those things, I just laugh. At <laughs> body. Don't even tell me. Just do it. <laughs> it is never without purpose. Can we serve God like our life depends on it? Can we so see it on the heart like our life depends on it? I said number one reason is because of what? I said you should keep serving. That's what you should do. I'll just tell you the three things. Next. Number two, find your security in the Lord. Don't find security in men. Find it in the Lord. Not self what? Not your possession. So that when your iPhone break, you will not die. So that when that boyfriend leaves you, you will not die. I don't want to go to your speech because of one stupid boy. I'm telling you, I'm tired of visiting people like that. Stop putting your life on people. Men are men. At their best, they are men. God is the only one who will never leave you nor forsake you. He has not even married you. You cannot sleep. Listen, all of these things will pass away. Including love, lust, mana mana in your face, all this lightning. Yeah, when it touches me, my eyes is shining. It will pass away. Find your security in God. Someone looked at me. Hey, and someone said, hey, you don't know him. He's very stupid and I look at your opinion. What's my own about that? When I meet you, somebody say, you are not shaking. I say, your opinion. What's my own about that? It's your opinion, sweetheart. I know who I am. Motika Bible to Jekwe. Nothing you can tell me. Ah, I know who I am. I cannot change. I will not change. I am like my father. The unchanging changer. I'm the apple of his eyes. You are not saying I'm not fine. Something's wrong with you. How can God's eye not be fine? How can he tattoo me in the palm of his hands and you say I'm not worth it in the world? He's made my feet like hands feet. You say I'm slow in your eyes. Don't let the world tell you things. Stop being sad. Jump up. Winner man. You are a winner. Find your security in God. Let the word of the Lord dwell in you richly. Let no man or demon throw you everywhere. John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Number three. Recognize that suffering and opposition come with the territory. You are not of the world. They will not support you. You think they will say, Oh, they, oh, they, If they sing it, they will laugh at you behind you. They don't like you, yes, because you are not corrupt like them. Hey, people deserve his leaders. That's why we are here in Nigeria today. Leave them alone. Let them talk. I love the way Reverend Abba put it. Their own is to talk. Our own is to do. Let them talk. Let us be doing. Just keep doing. Forget it. Say, they hate me. First Peter 5.10. Peter put it in the way I love it. Read it. John 14.1. Don't even let anybody disturb you. Do the right thing always. Always. Do the right thing. We are not, when they ask me where I'm from, I say I'm from heaven. Kositai, Abasado, Nimi, Waka, they just sent me here. I will be recalled one day. Masmuro shared that a long time ago. He said, we'll all be recalled one day. We don't die. They recall us. 
And when they recalled me, I want to go back to that place. I don't want to say, they say he has decamped, he has changed kingdom, he has joined the North Korea people here. <laughs> Number four, your highest call is to use your gift to help him, to serve him, and to shepherd others. Use your gift. Now that you are fine, don't come and meet me and say, I want to go and snap it, I want to be a model, I'll slap you. What is that for? Because you are tall. Uh -huh. What should Esther do? Kill herself? God gave you beauty for himself. God gave you a voice for himself. Some of you, you have good voices. You will now go and join MTM for your face. You come back. You are, they have changed your voice. They have changed your life. They have changed your destiny. Go, ask God what does he want you to use it for? Use your gift to serve God. You can talk. Let's go on evangelism. Influence people. Some of you are prayer warriors, but you only pray for yourself alone. Shame on you. Jesus said, thy kingdom come, that we be done on earth. That's the highest of all prayers. Not supply me, Shawama. Apologies to those who make it here. And then number five, finally. Strive for holiness and humility. Holiness. Without which no one can see God. Holiness. You can't be a son of this kingdom and be sleeping with a man of another kingdom. And you cannot both say you are of this kingdom and be sleeping together. Adultery is not in our kingdom. Sorry, fornication is not in our kingdom. Stop this madness. Holiness is still the thing with God. Oh, when I was in that church, we used to sing. I was in the choir. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'll sing one song for you now. And the song goes like this. Go. I will, whether you like it or not, you people can go home. I will sing it today. I sing that song. Today, I will sing it. Say, God will never readjust the standard of righteousness to the level of man. God will never readjust the standard of righteousness to the level of man. Listen, no matter who you are, the whole world may be gay, but God will never Oh, some of you are thinking his voice is not that bad. <laughs> I feel myself happy. I mean. <laughs> Listen. But that's the truth. Some of you voice are. <laughs> Let's PFL come and sing here. <laughs> See, God will never readjust his standard of righteousness to your level. He won't say no because your word, your word now permissive. Let's now break it down so that it will be easy for them to enter heaven. Be holy. Look at your neighbor, be holy. What does it mean to be holy? Be devoted to God. To God. Not to blue film. Not to masturbation. Not to pornography. Somebody says it's not blue film anymore because it's not blue screen. It's pornography now. I say, okay. To pornography. To envy. Envy. Envy has killed some of you. Envy has killed some of you. What did he do for you? I don't know. I just don't like him. Shut up, shut up. He's not going to ask you out. Ooh, he has another girlfriend. Keep it, that's your life. He has married. Otter. Envy. What did he do? I just don't like it. I don't like the way it works. Keep quiet. Everyone is our home. Everyone is where we are going. Everyone is the place to be. We're going to finish by reading James chapter 4, 7 to 8. In the message translation. I'm done. James 4, 7 to 8, the message translation. My guy, my guy is sharp now. It's there. Listen to this. Bible says, so let God work his will in you. I like it. He said, yeah, a loud no to the devil. And watch him scamper. You see, when I told you to shout, you know what I mean. Yell it. No. I'm not in your kingdom. He said, watch him scamper. Say a quiet yes to God. And it will be there in no time. Quit dabbling in sin. You see the way they dabble in sin? Keep doing it. He said, purify your inner life. Quit playing the field. Verse 8. That's finished. No, no, don't go away. Stay there. How many of us are ready to say yes to God? This is not an altar call. Are you ready to say yes to God? Do you want to win when it matters? Let them win. Friendly, Lily. Let them win. 
Let them drive the Rolls Royce and the Lexus. Some of you need to delete your Instagram page. It's killing you. When you see, ah, Bugatti, yeah, you went on depression. Stop that nonsense. <laughs> Some of you need to keep comparing yourself with your workmates. Those people are, you are working together, you don't know what they are doing. You, you don't know what they are doing. You, stop it. And if your boss does not like you, keep praying for him. Bow down your head, bow down your ass. If you are here, you are saying, you know what, I want to make heaven. This, I don't care whether you are born again before, you are not born again before. But you are going to make a covenant with God and say, heaven is the priority. Put your hand on your chest if you want to make heaven your priority right now. Heaven is your priority. I'm not saying you want to make heaven. You are saying heaven is my priority. Even if you are born again before or not, heaven is your priority. Put your hand on your chest. Put your hand on your chest. This is not another call. Heaven is my priority. I'm going to look at heaven. I'm not going to look at men. Put your hand on your chest. Put your hand on your chest. And I want you to begin to court covenant with God. God, I will make heaven my priority. I know I'm an ambassador on earth. I'm going to live as one. I'm going to live as one. I'm going to quit dabbling in sin. I'm going to purify my inner life. I'm going to quit playing the field. I'm going to yell a loud no to the devil. I'm not saying yes to the devil anymore, to his wives and car prices. I quit looking at men. I quit getting depressed and sad. I quit looking at people to find my joy. I find my joy in Jesus. I find my joy not in my possession. My security is in heaven. I know at that place, uh, house, uh, where no be, no evil, no destroyer can ever take anything from it. I'm going to stay with God. I'm going to stay with God. I'm going to stay with God.